this process to come out into the open. A final point I would like to make about the House Reapportionment Reform Plan is that it protects Ohio's communities by penalizing plans that break them apart. It also ensures that Ohio's minorities are protected by requiring that the plans follow federal minority rights guidelines. Uh, I would be happy to answer any questions unless you would like to hear from uh, Ann or Dick before questions are posed. Preference? And then I will let uh, my colleagues speak first. Thank you very much. Reform of our redistricting procedures is long overdue. Too often, citizens have been denied fair and equitable representation because one party uses its control of reapportion of boards to draw districts in such a manner as to give itself more seats than it deserves on the basis of the popular vote. Too often, voters find it impossible to hold their elected officials accountable because they've been safely ensconced in lopsided uh, supermajority districts. Too often, the representation of voters' preferences is impeded by boundaries that break up communities and swamp their citizens with voters from distant and very different parts of the state. It's time to put an end to these gerrymandering practices and establish a fair system for the drawing of legislative boundaries. The proposed House resolution is a product of a two-year nonpartisan effort to establish a fair and transparent process for drawing new legislative district lines. It is based upon procedures and criteria rooted in sound principles of democratic governance, initially developed by a coalition of nonpartisan good government advocates, including the League of Voters and Ohio Citizen Action. This system was tested in the spring of 2009 through a competition administered by the Office of the Secretary of State that evaluated plans submitted by citizens from throughout the state of Ohio, including one of my undergraduate students, and even including a, an, uh, an Illinois state legislator. After carefully studying the results of that competition, we have concluded that our system works well and that it is simple enough to attract participation by large numbers of Ohio citizens. <coughs> the resolution introduced by Representative Letson for House consideration builds upon those procedures and criteria, although it introduces some changes in the way our criteria are implemented. I strongly endorse this resolution. Before going on, it's important to recognize that this is one of two initiatives intended to improve redistricting procedures in Ohio. The other is SJR5, initiated and designed by Senator John Husted and passed by the Senate. The Senate bill restructures the redistricting board, converting it into a more balanced bipartisan body. This restructured panel would be greatly preferable to the current reapportioned board, especially insofar as the support of two members from the minority party on the board would be required before any plan can be adopted. This would discourage some of the highly partisan and unfair winner-takes-all practices currently in place. Accordingly, I support and did testify in support of uh, that Senate proposal as well. But the criteria in the Senate bill are inadequate to preclude some of the worst abuses of gerrymandering. They include only a token consideration of competitiveness and an over-reliance on preservation of existing political subdivisions as guiding principles, which several studies have demonstrated would systematically bias the outcome in favor of one party over the other. We hope that the end product of this redistricting reform effort would be the combination of the best aspects of the Senate bill, most importantly restructuring the redistricting board, with the procedures and decision-making criteria in this proposed House resolution. These bills should not be considered rivals of one another. They're perfectly compatible. And joining the two would produce a bipartisan compromise that would establish the best redistricting system in the United States. This House resolution is based on four criteria which can be clearly defined, objectively measured, and transparently evaluated. And each is firmly rooted in core principles of democracy. Two of these criteria, geographical compactness and the avoidance, whenever possible, of splitting municipalities, are based on the notion of community representation. That is, 
the belief that in a democracy like ours, representation should be based on real rather than contrived communities, and that this would be facilitated by creating districts that include reasonably compact and relatively homogeneous geographical areas. Another criterion is that elections ought to be competitive. Indeed, competitiveness is an essential prerequisite for democratic accountability, which is too often sacrificed by gerrymandering whose principal goal is the protection of incumbents. That practice breeds frustration and cynicism on the part of voters and must be curtailed. Perhaps most importantly, parties ought to be fairly represented in the legislature in accord with the preferences of voters. The primary objective of gerrymandering has been for the party controlling the redistricting process to stack the deck in favor of its candidates and emerge from elections with a much higher percentage of seats that can be justified by the level of electoral support it received. This can seriously distort the mandate of the voters. Competition on a level playing field is a fundamental requirement for citizens to be fairly represented in a high quality democracy. In combination with the restructuring of the redistricting board as proposed by the Senate, it represents a dramatic step forward that will improve the quality of democracy in Ohio. Indeed, if passed by the legislature and by the voters in the referendum to follow, it would represent an outstanding bipartisan accomplishment that would make Ohio the very model of democratic integrity. We now have a unique opportunity to reform these undemocratic practices, and we hope that the legislature will respond positively and quickly. And as a personal note, uh, we definitely appreciate and commend the efforts of Representative Tom Letson, House Speaker Herman Budish and his staff, Senator John Husted, Senate President Bill Harris, and Secretary of State Jennifer Bruner and her staff for their remarkable efforts to advance this far-reaching bipartisan reform of our electoral procedures. Thank you, Dr. Gunther. And now, the League of Women Voters in Hankin. Thank you. Um, I echo what uh, Representative Levinson and Dr. Gunther have said. I think at the end of the day, what the voters want is a fair deal. And uh, to date, we have had uh, a certain amount of stack stacking, um, sometimes toward the Republicans, sometimes toward the Democrats. I think we, we just want our representatives to look like us. Um, many of us live in, in uh, mixed neighborhoods that are Democratic and Republican. We're probably going to end up with uh, competitive races in November. Many of us live in areas where we all kind of look like each other. Rural Ohio, where I grew up, uh, we all kind of look like Republicans back there. And, and, and probably there, the, the competitive race will be in the primary. And I think that's as it should be, because it's a very Republican area. Many of our cities have very Democratic areas. They're, they, they are probably best served by a Democratic representative. Those districts may certainly still lean that way. So I think the, the plan that we, uh, the, the, the competition permitted those kinds of things. I think this um, bill permits those kinds of things. But at the end of the day, it's going to give us representatives that look like us and can represent us. 